So, guys in Brampton, how are you? Excellent, excellent. So, go to the first page of the handout. So, I'm going to teach you the cost approach today. You're going to understand it right now, right here. No problem at all. So, guys, what it is, is that they're going to give you a lot of information. Some of it you need, some of it you don't. For example, here they give you about your property, the frontage of your property, and the depth of your property. But the frontage is important. So you want to put a value, by front meter. So in this course, they give you the per front meter, not the foot. So they're going to give you the measurement per front meter. They're going to give you the measurement of your house by meter too. So when you multiply meter by meter, you're going to get the, the square meter. Okay. So they're going to give you the measurement of your house as well. Now, at the bottom of the page, they give you the effect, uh, actual age uh, of your house. But actual age, we don't care to it. We care to the effective age. Now, why I highlighted this? Because next page, they explain that the actual age equals the effective age. So that's why we need this 25 for next page. Right. You understand? So if you go to the next page, here they say an effective age right. equals the actual age of the house. Okay? So that means that the effective age of the house is 25. In your exam, they could say the actual age is no, 30 years, but effective age is 25 years. So we don't care to the actual age. We care to the effective age. Now, there are a couple of things you need to, the formula to get the depreci uh, depreciation is this, guys. So to calculate the depreciation, you need the effective age of uh, the house divided by economic life of the house. Economic life of the house. So what economic life is that after they build it, after how many years is going to be worthless? Look at my hands. So you build the house today, after seven years is going to be land value, no value for the house. So that's called the economic life of the house. Now, most of the times they don't give you that. So they don't give you this. They give you remaining economic life of the house. So what's that left? So you have to add it to the effective to get the economic life of the house. Did you get that? One more time. So what you need to calculate the depreciation is effective age divided by economic life multiplied by replacement cost to get the depreciation. But most of the times they don't give you the economic life. They give you the remaining, what's left. So you have to add it to effective to get the economic life. Okay. So here. So that's why in this case they give you that. And remaining economic life is 35 years. Yes? So what's remaining is 35. You have to add it to this 25, so you're going to get the 60. So you need the 60. So 25 divided by 60 multiplied by replacement cost is going to give you the depreciation. Yes? Yeah, you build it today. After 7 years, 60 years, it's going to be worthless. So land value. So it means that it has no value for the house. Yeah. So another name that they call it in the exam, instead of calling it economic life, they call it life expectancy. So that's the same thing. Tomato, tomato. And obviously remaining economic life, they call it remaining life expectancy. Same thing. Did you get the formula to get the depreciation? Yes, we got, we got it. I'm going to teach you how to find the replacement cost. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to show you how to do that. But you need to know how to calculate the depreciation when you have that. Can I continue? Yes. No. Yes. Maybe. Okay. Good. Look at this. So, for example, for anything other than a house, is the same formula for depreciation. So you need that for later on. So look at here. For example, the driveway, it's going to cost you $3,000 brand new. RCN is a repre replacement cost new or reconstruction cost new. So basically brand new value. So, and they're going to say that it's a 15 years effective and 15 year remaining. So 15 plus 15 is 30. So that's how you got this 30. 
So 15 plus 15 is 30. So then 15 effective divided by 30, multiply by replacement cost, it gives you the depreciation. So this is the depreciation that I calculated on this side. So for the fence, 2,500 is brand new, five and 15, so that's 20. So five divided by 20, multiply by 2,500 is gonna give you the depreciation. For the deck, five and 15, that's 20. Five divided by 20, multiply by depreciation, is gonna give, the replacement cost is gonna give you depreciation. So although it's gonna cost you 4,000, but 1,000 is already de destroyed, depreciated. Now, sod and tree is 11,400, but sod and tree, they don't have depreciation. Depreciation is zero for sod and tree. So you need to calculate the depreciation for everything other than a house for the last step. Now, for the house, I'm going to teach you how to calculate the replacement cost. So that's coming next. Okay. You guys with me? Yes? Good. Did you get the depreciations here? 15 and 15 is 30. 5 and 15. They give you that. Effective age, remaining life. They give it to you. Now, first thing you need is put a value on land. They're going to tell you that a property sold two months ago for 60000 the land. The frontage is 30 meter, so you don't care to the debt. But this one has something that makes it superior to your property, 5%. So you have to use your hand for this one. So you're going to say, okay, this is my subject. Show me your subject with your left hand. Show me the subject. This one has something more. Show me the, the comparable. More is less. You have to minus. Less is more. More is less. You never move your subject. So this, they say this is superior to your subject. So this is my subject. This is superior. 5% I have to minus. So this is going to be a minus 5%. So then this one is going to be, they say, inferior. So minus here, this is less. Less is more. So this is going to be plus 8%, minus 5%. So you have to do other adjustments. And you have to do two months time adjustment. Am I correct? So because this one sold two months ago. So if this was selling less than a month, one week, two week, three week, you don't do time adjustment. But for a month or more, you have to do time adjustment. Second one. Sold four months ago and has something that it is. Uh, so sometimes they don't give you superior, inferior. So they explain it to you. So you have to know if it's plus or minus. Could you read the second one? So here, from here, it. It refers some credit and labeling to be comparable to the subject. And adjustment of 11%. So is that 11% plus or minus? So because it's yours here, this requires that. So it means it's less. So less is more. The side measure, 30 meters by uh, 45 meters. So only the frontage is important, not the depth of the land. So the last one sold last week, so you're not going to do a time adjustment for that. And has something that it is superior. So more is less, minus 2%. And, and the measurement they give it to you. So now, first thing you need to know, it's about the time adjustment for the first one and second one. Because the third one, you don't have a time adjustment. Yes? So you need to know how much the prices went up or went down. Maybe the land values went up, maybe the land values went down. So you have to do the adjustment. So what happens, they're going to give you three other land that's sold and resold. They sold and they sold again. So they call it sold and resold method. So they say sold five months ago, 50,000, and sold last week, 56,100, the same land. So you want to know if the price went up or went down. So the formula for that is this one. New price minus old price divided by push percentage. So new minus old divided by old. So between now and uh, five months ago, which one is a new price? Now, 56,100 <coughs> minus 50,000 old, divide by 50,000, push percentage. That's going to give you 12.2%. 
What is that? That is the price that changed in the last uh, five months. Now, if you divide it by five, it's going to give you the price per month. So that's what you want to find. Because from five months ago to today is a five months. So if I divide by five, I find out the price adjustment per month. Second one sold six months ago. So new today minus old divided by old push percentage. So that's 15.1 and took six months. So if you divide by six, it's going to give you 2.51 per month. The last one sold four months ago. New minus old divided by old, that's 10.17. Divided by four is going to give you 2.54% per month. Are you guys with me? Now, in real life, this is it. So one house has went up a little bit more, a little bit less. So I could go and say, okay, in my opinion, the price per month adjustment is roughly 2.5. So this is 2.44, this is 2.51. 2.54, not as an average. In my opinion, I could say the price adjustment is 2.5% per month. Am I correct? She could go to the same house and say, no, 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 Bob, you're making a mistake. It's 2.48. And he could go and say, no, 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 Bob, you're making a mistake. It's 2.51. And all of us, we are correct. Because we are not taking average between the three. Am I correct? We are giving our opinion. That's why you send three different sales, uh, three different appraisers to the same house. They come up with the three different numbers. Am I correct? So, why? Because they have a different opinion. Now, but in your exam, you can't have a different opinion. Yes or no? Because you need to arrive at the same right answer. So, that's why in the exam, all of them are going to be exactly the same thing. So, if this is 2.44, this is going to be 2.44, this is going to be 2.44. So, you cannot have a different opinion. Did you get it? Choose 2.44. So, what I suggest in the exam, don't do all three. Just do the first one, find the answer, and move on. You can do whatever you want, okay? I'm telling you, don't double check, okay? So, did you get that? So, what's the question? How much is the time adjustment here? So, and uh, we have to find that. So, the formula is this. You find the time adjustment per month. Now, there is a theory question about this. They say, okay, in real life, when, when the salespeople, they find this, how do they, how do they estimate the time adjustment? And here it says, as an appraiser, in my opinion, not average. In the exam, they say they take average. That's wrong. Not average. I estimate the time adjustment of a 2.5% per month. So it's not an average. It is the appraiser's opinion. So do they take, how do they... Take the, how do they um, uh, find a time adjustment per month? His opinion. Everybody has a different opinion. But in your exam, you can't have a different opinion. So they put the same numbers. So let's go to the next page. <sighs> Guys, unfortunately, they're not going to give you this chart. So you have to memorize it. So you have to know what to do. I'm going to show you what to do. So how much is sold the first one? 60,000. What was the frontage? So you have to divide by the frontage. So 60,000 divided by 30 is going to give you 2,000 per front meter. So this is this much sold. It has a 30 meter too. So this divide by this is going to give you this. This divide by this is going to give you this. So that's a price per front meter. Can I have your attention? Then you can write down. So it sold two months ago. Each month, I say, in my opinion, it's 2.5%. So I have to add 5% to that. So this plus 5% is going to give me this, because this one sold two months ago. This one sold four months ago. I said, in my opinion, it's 25 per month. So that's 10%. So then this plus 10% is going to give you this. This one doesn't have an adjustment because it sold last week. Your first question is this one. What are the time-adjusted sell price per front meter for one, two, and three? Write it down. What are the time-adjusted sell price per front meter for one, two, and three? Time-adjusted sell price per front meter for site number one, two, and three. Okay. Guys, did you write it down? You have to know how the calculation is done. So this 60,000 
divide by 30 meters is going to give you this. So write this down. I'll be back just in a second. Per front meter. Yep.
So now after you got those numbers, you have to do other adjustments. So if you go down, so that's 2100. So you're not going to add 8% and minus 3%. So that you're going to get a different number. So what do you got to do here? Okay. So instead of adding 8% and minusing 3, 5%, you're just going to add 3%. So this plus 3% is going to give you this. So then this number plus 11%, because you only have 11% here, is going to give you this. And this minus 2% is going to give you this. So this minus 2% is going to give you this one. So do it. I want you to get those numbers. So your second question is, what are the fully adjusted sell price per front meter? So they're asking for the three. Can I continue? So now, which one are you going to choose to for to use for your property between the three? So the most recent one, am I correct? Yep. So go to the first page of the handout. Find what is the frontage of your house. So for your land, what is the frontage for your property? 30.45, yeah? Did you, did you find that number? So, so guys, we have that in this page. So see 30.45 multiplied by the most recent one. It's going to give you a land value. So that's the third question. What is the land value for subject property? Hey, that's a land value, exactly. Come again. Multiply by the most recent one. So the third one is the most recent, yeah? So look at the hand. Look at the, uh, at the, at the look over there. So you see the most recent? Multiply by your frontage is going to give the value of your building, your land. I'm sorry, your land. So this is how you find a land value. Now we have to find other than the land. So let's go to the next uh, part that we have to find. What's the value on, on top of the land? So that's a cost approach. You find the land value, you find the value of everything on the land. So Sorry, what we just did was the cost approach. We are doing the cost approach. We're still in the cost approach. So with that, we find the land value. Now we want to find the building value because we ha they gave you the value other than building, like the driveway, you know, uh, fence, deck. But for the house, you have to calculate. So for the house, they say this brand new house. 175,000 sold three months ago. Yes? So, and they say it's 82,000, the land and other improvement. The site and other improvement was 82,000. So if I minus the sold price, minus the land and other improvement, that's going to give me the building value. Am I correct? For this similar house. Now, then they give you the measurement of the house, meter by meter. If you multiply, you're going to get a square meter. So you, if, you, if you divide the building value by square meter, that's going to give you the building value per square meter. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So, now, but then they say this building has, its uh, building uh, prices increased by 1% per month. And how long ago this one sold? Three months ago. So you have to do three months adjustment. And they say this 
okay, applies to all the other properties too. So this one sold six months ago. So you have to do 6% for that one. And the last one sold when? Last week. Last week so you, have to, you don't have to do anything. Now, other than for a second one, they say there's something that's inferior. So minus here, this is inferior. Less is more. So you have to add 1% about the quality of the work. And this one had something that's superior. More is less. So you have to minus 1%. Again, they're not going to give you the chart. So you have to know what to do. So here is what we do. Whatever sold price minus the land value minus the other improvement is going to give you the building cost. Whatever is the sold price, okay, minus the land and other improvement is going to give you the building cost. So, you got the building cost. Now, you guys, did, did you see how I got the building cost? Yeah. Now, in the exam, they're going to tell you what happened to the land. Pay attention to this part. This is a trick they use in the exam. They say the land in the last year increased 5% per year. So something like that. So am I minusing the land value? So whatever happened to the land is irrelevant anymore. So that's extra information. So if they tell you the land values increased or decreased or whatever happened to the land value, that's not important because what you're working on is a building value. So this is how much is sold, and this is how much it was the value at that time. So if you minus, it's going to give you the value of a building at that time. So whatever happened to the land after that is extra information. Okay. So now, but whatever happened to the building, so let's say they say building material increased 1%, and this one was three months ago. So three multiplied by 1% as 3%. So this plus 3% is going to give you this. This one 6% plus 6% is going to give you this. And this one sold last week, so there's no adjustment for that. One percent on the on the previous page. They say one percent per month. The building adjust building values went up. So and this one doesn't have any other adjustment. This one had something less that you had to add, and this one had something more that you had to minus. So this one is nine marks in the exam. So the question is. Up to here. What is the fully adjusted building cost for building one, two, and three? So they're looking for these three numbers. Three marks, three marks, three marks, nine marks. This is the question 39 of your handout. So if you want to know how you're going to get in the exam, I would study the question 39 of the handout. So after you've so basically that's your homework tonight. Yep. Actually, you know what? I think I have made a mistake. <coughs> what is the indicated cost per square meter? That's going to get. So th this is the fully adjusted cost per building. So you got that one. Okay. Sorry, guys. So you got this one and this one and this one. Then you have to divide it by square meter. They give you the meter. Multiply by meter. It's going to give you what? A square meter. So then this price divided by square meter is going to give you this. So this is the question. My bad. So the question is this. What are the... Indicated cost per square meter for one, two, and three. So this is meter multiplied by meter is going to be square meter. So this value divided by square meter is going to give you this square meter. This divided by this is going to give you this. Sorry, my bad. So the question is, what is what are the indicated costs per square meter? One and two and three. Yeah.
Can I continue? Question 39. Question number 39. Not page. Question number 39. This is only. It's a very good question. Now, can I continue? So I want you to go to the first page of the handout, the cover page, and tell me what's a measurement of your house. What's a, a square meter of your house? 24.3 by 10 meter. Am I correct? So if you multiply meter by meter, you're going to get a square meter. That's going to be 243 square meter. You see there in the hand where it says 243? I got that from the first page. So that one, I'm going to multiply by the most recent. So I'm going to go over the third one, and that's going to give me the replacement cost. So that's how I'm going to get the replacement cost for the main building. So now you need to know, do the depreciation. So again, I got the square meter of the house, my, my subject property. I multiply by most recent one, okay, which is this one. So then it's going to give me the replacement cost. So now I need the depreciation. So the formula for depreciation was effective divided by economic multiplied by replacement cost. So go to the second page and tell me what is the effective age of the house. Second page, second page of the handout, the page after cover page. page. No, what is the effective age? 25. 25. 25. So 25 divided by 60. Where, where did I get the 60? The economic life. So that because it was 25 plus 35, that would be 60. Yeah. So 25 divided by 60 multiplied by this replacement cost, it gives you the depreciation. So although it's going to cost me one or three thousand to build brand new, but forty-three thousand is gone destroyed. So one or three thousand minus forty-three thousand. This is what's left. So it's going to cost me one or three thousand to build it brand new, <sighs> yeah. But forty-two thousand, three thousand is gone. So this is what's left. Sixty thousand is left. So hold on. The replacement cost cost you one hundred and three thousand. Appreciated 43,000 and change. So now the value of the property is 60,000. Today is 60,000. Although it's going to cost me to build brand new this much, but this much is gone. So this is what's left. Now they're going to give you this chart. So this chart is going to be given to you. So you have the land value. So you got the 66,000 from the land value. Now, Everything on the land, so first the building, minus, that's 60,000, we just did this one. On the second page, they said 3,000 is a driveway, but 1,500 is depreciated, so 1,500 is left. Wooden deck, um, so, and the saw and tree, they don't depreciate, you just write it here. Add everything on the land together, all of them added together is going to give you this much. So you write it here. So the land plus everything on the land is going to give you the property value. So you have to run it to nearest thousand dollar. So the question is, what is the indicated value by cost approach? Run it to the nearest thousand dollar. So we did calculate that in course in a, in a second page. 
Go to the second page. <laughs> so we got this 1500. So 15 divided by 30 multiplied by 3000 is 15,000. Effective divided by economic multiplied by replacement cost is going to give you depreciation. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, let me go back. Yeah. 15 is effective, 15 is remaining, so the total is 30. Second page. Yeah. Effective. If you go to the first page, at the bottom of the page, it says that 25 years is there. Actual age. But this is the cost approach. So, with the cost of a property, you find a value. So, I strongly suggest do the question 39 tonight. It's not an easy question. What is it? Okay, 14. Okay, I'm going to do it. Yeah, sure. Guys, are you done? Yes, I'm going to answer questions right now. She was first, then we're going to do 14, and then the rest of it. So, guys, uh, next week I'm going to teach you the um, direct and personal approach and income approach. So we're going to be done with the math. So let's go to the sample questions. So let's go to this set of questions, the handwritten one, this one. So this is a very good set of questions. You're going to get very similar to this to the exam. Page 11, so you see this page, this set of questions. It's only one set that it's a main set. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Okay, so now, what's the question you have? Uh, so, Maureen was uh, from the textbook. Uh huh. From the book, okay. 260, okay. Uh huh. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I like so which one are you going to pick between those three? Which one is more similar to yours? Uh, How many units yours has? No, how many units? Seven. seven. How many? The other one. Which, which one has the seven units? No, so, so you have to find a value per, uh, and how long they sold? Which one sold when? So from those three. Yeah, so one sold last week. So you're going to go, so how many units it has? Six. So, so you have to divide by the six and then multiply by seven to yours. Because yours has seven units, am I correct? Yeah. So how much this one sold? How much this one sold? Uh, so divide that by eight. Okay. Is it eight units or six, six units? So divide by six is going to give you six units, and then multiply by seven to get uh, your unit. Because there are different number of units, am I correct? Yeah. So you have to, you have to uh, compare apple to apple. That's a unit, yours is a unit. So whatever score footage has, that's extra information. You don't need that. So two of them sold last week. So two of them sold last week? So which one has the least number of adjustments? Number of adjustments. Number of adjustments, not amount. So which so those two, one of them sold last week, the other one sold last week too, yeah? So how many other adjustments they have? Other than the time adjustment. The one you choose that has the least number of adjustments. Now you know how to do it. Yeah? Great. Okay. So question 14, guys. So we don't have that. Do you see 14? No. So Lily, by mistake, printed that version that has 14. 14 is not in the exam. So question. There's no 14 in my handout, am I correct? So, you know, you cross it out. 
So what's your question? Anyone else? What formulas? So, GIM is sale price divided by effective gross income. GIM is a sale price of a similar business divided by effective gross income of a similar business. The NOI is the effective uh, gross income minus expenses. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the, um, the effective gross income is the NOI plus the expenses. Yeah. Okay. Now, the value is the GIM times the effective gross income. Okay. So that one, the value, wouldn't it be the triangle one? Oh, that because it depends. If they're asking you uh, find a value by using a GIM, so then you have to use that with the, the formula that you have. But if they say find a value by using an overall rate, so then you have to triangle. Yeah. So the value is the GIM times the effective gross income. Yes. If they're asking you using the GIM, you have to use that formula. Yes. There's five of them. I've got economic, um, effective, plus remaining equals economic. Then I have economic minus remaining equals effective. Then I've got effective minus economic equals remaining. Just listen. Listen to me. You're, you're, you're driving yourself nuts. Okay, hold up. So here, effective... Remaining okay. and economic, the whole thing. So basically, if you want to know how many remaining, the economic minus this is going to give you this. This plus this is going to give you this. This minus this is going to give you this. Okay. So that line in the middle is minus. No. no. This is like 15 years, so your house is effective. And 35 years. So in this case, was a 25 and 35. Am I correct? And this is 60. So 60 minus 25 is going to give you 35. 60 minus 35 is going to give you 25. 25 plus 35 is going to give you 60. So, you're welcome. You don't have to memorize it. You've got to understand it. It's a logic. Because you want to, you know, drive yourself nuts. And me too. No, don't worry. So, so again... You should, you shouldn't, this is very easy. Something plus something is going to give you the total. Okay. So this total minus this is going to give you this. The total minus this is going to give you this. It's also because they call it different names. Doesn't matter. Again, they could name it whatever they want. Okay, so also, um... Okay, guys, anyone else has a question? So if not, you could leave. You know, we're done. And I'll, in Brampton, make sure the door is closed. You have a question in Brampton? Okay, coming back to you. Okay. Page 5025. 1925, yeah? Okay. <laughs> 1925. Okay, let's see. Maybe the rounding is different. So, 376, 23rd of July. So, between July and now, what's the date today? 24th of November. This is the now. So, 382. 911 new minus 386 919 divided by 386 919 push percentage so you have to you have a problem in rounding look at here 382 911 minus 386 919 divided by 386 919 push percentage so that's going to be 1.0358 and so if, if you look at this, so, and it's a minus number, okay? So you have to see, so this is going to be minus. So 1.0, if you're rounding this here, is going to be 1.036. Yes, this 5 is going to be 6. So if you're rounding it, it's going to be 1.04. So you have to round it to two decimals. 
I put four decimals to show you how to run. So this is going to be 1.04 minus. And yours is sold 376. So 376,000 multiplied by minus 1.04%. How much is that? So it's going to be a minus number, obviously. So 376,000 multiplied by 1.04% and make it minus. It's going to be $3,910. I know, I know, I know. You didn't do the rounding properly, but that's good. At least you practice. The rest of them, even they didn't practice. So you're ahead. Güle, güle. Mama. Hoş geldiniz. آفید زن. حالا اینه هست که آره. اصلا نمیخواد بخون. نمیخواد بد. نمیخواد میخوام نمیخواد. بلش کن. وقت نمیخواد تو امتحان. من داشت دور دیگه. نمیخواد. بیا. خب اصلا پرینت نمیکنم. با بقیه اونو لیلی اشتباه پرینت کرده بعد. چاو. Off it is in. Thanks. Guys, make sure in, in Brampton you close the door properly like every weekend. Thank you.